Hello there and welcome back to another video and it is Liverpool 2, Southampton 0 and it was a good victory, good victory, that's all I can say. Not saying it was the most convincing victory of all time but it was a good victory, it was one that we need, one that we desperately needed um, against a team that does cause us problems quite a lot. Didn't do a preview for this one because to be honest with you I've been quite a little bit ill, a little bit, you know, not feeling great so I didn't do anything like that, just rested up tried to take care of myself, and I hope that you guys are doing the very, very same as well. But we're going to go in, we're going to go look at Liverpool versus Southampton, we're going to look at the things like the statistics and stuff like that, um, and we're going to go look at some other stuff as well regarding the top four, regarding the table, where we are, how things stand and how things could possibly finish. Obviously, we can't predict anything. All it is is just thoughts and musings and things like that, but... This is what we want to talk about. This is what we're going to talk about as well. Please feel free to get your comments in the comments section below as well. I do value your comments very, very much. And I appreciate all of the support that you guys have given me a great deal. I really, really do appreciate it. So, let's get straight in to SofaScore over here. Okay, we've got Liverpool versus Southampton here. Um, obviously, we seem to line up in our normal 4-3-3. Great to see Fabinho back in midfield as well. I was a little bit surprised to see Reese Williams um, starting alongside Nat Phillips. But apart from a... I love this website. Thank you for doing that. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, honestly, I yes, he gets caught a little bit, you know, for a lack of pace. Nat Phillips sometimes get caught a little bit as well for a bit of a lack of pace as well. That's That goes without saying. These two aren't the quickest centre-backs of all time and... Eventually, we will get caught out as well. Kabak has apparently picked up an injury or a knock of some sort that actually ruled him out of this game. Hopefully, he'll be back for the game against Manchester United. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on in, in this video. Um, and a couple of other injuries as well. I don't think they were actually listed um, in down here. Um, they were not. But even so, it was a little bit of a surprise. But hey, they put in a good performance like a pretty assured performance as well. Um, if I talk about things that I was a little bit disappointed about first, then we can go on to what I was pleased about as well. I think the main thing that I was disappointed about with this, this Liverpool performance, if I'm going to be harsh, was we allowed Southampton to have a lot of shots and a lot of shots on target as well. And this is where Alisson really comes to the fore in this game because he was man of the match, hands down. Hands up, actually. <laughs> Good one, Alisson. No, honestly, he was he was far and away the man of the match, without a doubt. Because if we go and look at Southampton's six shots on target here, six goalkeeper saves, that's Alisson. Six goalkeeper saves to match six shots on target as well. He was brilliant. You know, there was only one moment that Alisson really gave us a little bit of a, you know, made sure that we, we were awake as fans, where he was passing to one centre-back, centre-back passed back to him, Allison passes the ball back out, and it's straight to a Southampton player, literally, like, within, I don't know how many metres, but literally within striking distance of the goal, they took a shot, it was a pretty poor shot in the end, and Allison actually made the, you know, made the save, calmed himself down, calmed those that around, around him, and distributed again. That was the only sort of thing that that anybody could pick up on that Allison had made a mistake, but he was exceptional. He was very, very key to not just the clean sheet but the victory as well. He was absolutely fantastic. Um, I think that's really, I think the lack of control as well, the lack of control we seem to have at some parts of the game where it's going a bit too end to end. Where we feel we could, we've got the players on the pitch in Wijnaldum, Fabinho, Thiago, as well as the defenders as well, right? They might not be an experienced partnership, and they are, you know, especially Reese Williams hasn't played a great deal in the last couple of months, um, if if at all. And Nat Phillips has been there; he's had an injury, but he's come back and he looked he looked absolutely solid. But what I mean with the midfield is that we had the midfield players in there to help control. You look at Fabinho, you look at Thiago, Genie Wijnaldum, they offer different characteristics to each other, but for me, I think it would have worked together really, really well in terms of control in the midfield, but we just couldn't, in some ways, 
just because of that lack of control, not just in the midfield, but just in general, it made for a very, very end-to-end -end game, a, very, a game where the possession overall was quite similar. I think we had 54%, they had 46%. It was quite end-to-end, -end, and I don't like end-to-end -end games because that's sometimes where we, or quite often, especially this season, we get caught out because it opens you up to getting caught on the counter. And us getting caught on the counter is something that just keeps happening over and over and over again. And that also leads into Southampton having a lot of chances, a lot of shots, six shots on target as well. Um, I think if we were to go and to look at player statistics in the attack, and the two shots on target for Southampton, or the most, was Che Adams, or Shea Adams, however you say his name, Ward Prowse, Nathan Redmond as well. Uh, shots off target, the most was Nathan Redmond here, Nat Phillips for us, Jota, etc, etc. Um, we just allowed too many chances, and that was just, I say disappointing, like it's a really, really bad thing. It can be a bad thing if they've punished you. This time they haven't. But... That we were also fortunate in some ways that, you know, Danny Ings wasn't available. He was actually out injured. They had actually quite a... Obviously, Minamino couldn't play against us, we being the parent club. Um, I think Obafemi did actually come on. Um, he did. But, yeah, it, like we were lucky that someone like Danny Ings wasn't up front. That's all I'll say there. Um, there's no... don't know if he is still there, but Shane Long? Um, no. Anyway, just picking names out that I can think of. Um... Forster actually seemed to do pretty well, um, dealt with a lot of the chances that we had, um, because we had a lot of chances as well, 14, 6 on target as well, which was actually an improvement in general of shots on target for Liverpool. Um, Salah had a good few on target, came in for some criticism on match of the day, which I didn't really, they focused pretty much everything on all the chances that Salah um, didn't take, but when you go and look at the attack and you look at shots on target... Salah, by the looks of it, had two shots, two shots on target. He's hitting the target, they're not going in the back of the net. They're either getting blocked or they're getting saved by the goalkeeper. You know, he had good chances, maybe some chances that he had where he could have possibly uh, passed the ball to somebody else. But in a high, you know, high pressure, high intensity environment, I've never been a footballer, never will be. <laughs> it's just not in me. Um, but to, to do at that level, everything's very, very quick. Everything's very, very instant. Sometimes it's more about like like let's take the shot, get the shot on target, and see what happens, you know. And a lot of the times that you know has come off for Liverpool. Sometimes it hasn't. Um, Jota also had two shots on target, one off. Um, he had some very very good chances as well. And a lot of people were criticising Jota, um, specifically online. I I don't get it. He's getting in all the positions that he needs to. He's taking the chances. It's just not coming off for him right now, coming off his long layoff that he had. Yes, he's been back for a couple of weeks now, if not a little bit longer. But he will get, he will start putting the goals in again. He'll start hitting the back of the net again. Let's not start turning on players that have done really well for us earlier on in this season um, as well. So, Mane. Mane was much more improved. Mane's had a lot of criticism recently. Um, and justified, you know, he's been so exceptional since he's been at Liverpool, like since he turned up at Liverpool, you know, being here the season before Salah came in. Mane is an absolutely fantastic player. He's just not been in good form or just not been in a good place maybe, which has maybe affected his form as well. Um, but he was much more improved. His, his attack, pos his positioning was much better. His ability to take on a player seemed to be much better, seemed to be much more lively as well. Salah producing the pass to actually, you know, for, for Mane to get on the end of it, get the header in past uh, Forster as well. It was really nice play. Quite a strange statistic is that that was the first time that Salah and Mane, apparently, I say apparently, that they have combined for the first time this season. Read into that what you will. I'm not reading anything into it. I'm just not. Um, so, to be honest with you as well, I saw that goal on a highlight because I missed the first half because my internet was down. It was a fantastic day. Everything was going wrong. But we did kick it in for the second half as well. It it felt like one of those games that we've had recently. Leeds United, Newcastle. Score the goal fairly early on. Not as early as we did against Newcastle. But we score the goal. 
and then we're struggling to get a second goal in. The second goal goes in, 90th minute, Thiago, of all people. <laughs> Thiago hasn't scored any goals for Liverpool at all this season, um, and didn't, you know, just wasn't the source of a goal that I thought it was going to be. Firmino's come on, come on at this point as well, 79th minute he's come on for Jota, just lays the ball off into into uh, Thiago's pass. Now, what you're normally expecting when he's running around that side of the box is that he's going to lay it off out wide. But instead, he picked his eyes up, looked at the goal, saw that his options around him were quite minimal. You know, they weren't in the positions that they could be to create a goal-scoring chance. Took the chance himself and put it in the back of the net. Thiago. <laughs> it, was, it was brilliant. It was a really nicely taken goal. Um, brilliantly taken goal, big fan of it as well, and I'm really happy for him to get the goal. I was obviously, obviously, really happy for us to get the victory as well against a team that have become a bit of a sticking point for us this season. Obviously, they scored a free kick against us very, very early on in the first game we played against them this season. Can't remember who scored it. Don't know if it was Danny Ings or not. Might have been. Um... And then we we couldn't get into that game. I'm really glad to get this uh, this victory here. Because now it turns up, you know, the rest of this video is about what could happen. Okay? Now, we have this monster of a game in three days. Liverpool versus Manchester United. Right, it's a massive game. Massive, massive game. We're going to go look at things like the table and stuff like that. And, and the games remaining. In fact, let's do that now. So, what we have is, we've got Manchester United next, West Brom at the weekend who have just been confirmed relegated by Arsenal on Sunday night, I think it was, got beat 3-1. <laughs> so we've got Manchester United on Thursday, uh, I believe 16th, is that a Saturday? Thursday, 14th. Maybe Sunday. I don't know. I'm getting my days. My days are here, or here, there, or everywhere. Could be Saturday. Got West Brom there. After that, got Burnley. And then after that, it's Crystal Palace. And I look at these games with a grimace on my face because people look at it and they just... All people seem to look at is the table. And they'll go, oh, Burnley. Burnley are right down there. Should beat them. No bother. Crystal Palace, 13th. Pfft, should beat them. Absolutely no bother. West Brom, relegated, should beat them, no bother. Burnley beat us at home, at Anfield, and took away our unbeaten streak at, at Anfield. Crystal Palace, yes, we, we put seven past them. All right, fair play, but this is a different period of time for us right now. We're not going to put seven past them this time, not in my opinion. And West Brom, first game that Sam Allardyce took over, and he got a draw against us. We scored, and they got a goal late on. Uh, maybe not late on. Might be around 80th minute, if I remember rightly. Somewhere around there. And they got a 1-1. Drew with them. Made it difficult for us, like all teams do. And then, of course, this is without even talking about the fact that we're going to face Manchester United in three days' time. Now, they've got... I will say about United, they've got a hell of a time. They played yesterday on Sunday. I think it was Sunday they played. They will play us on Thursday. No, no, sorry. They're playing on Tuesday as well. So they're playing tomorrow night. And then they play us again on Thursday. And then I think they play the weekend. I think that's how it is. That's crazy. That is a crazy schedule for them. They will have to rotate. They'll probably put a stronger team out against us than they will against Leicester. That's what I imagine. That's what I picture. Unless they want to put some breathing space in between... Leicester and Manchester United, which, you know, I, in my opinion, the top three is set as it is right now. Leicester and West Ham at the moment are going through a bit of a difficult spell. Talk about that in a second as well. But it's going to be really, really difficult games. All of these games are going to be difficult. Burnley, Palace, um, West Brom, United. Four games left. We've got 12 points to play for. Now, what does that mean in terms of the table? We come back to the table. Now, we sit on 57 points. <laughs> Tottenham lost 3-1 against Leeds. Very impressive by Leeds. Really, really impressive. Everton beat West Ham, but Everton are still there. They're still within two points of us, and they've got the also 
they're on the same amount of games played as us as well. So that's a dangerous one right there. West Ham lost, and they lost to Everton, obviously. Leicester lost 4-2 against Newcastle. An exceptional performance by Newcastle. I could not believe what I was seeing by that Newcastle performance. They also drew against Southampton. Their other loss here was against West Ham. Chelsea, United, City, they are where they are. You know, that they're untouchable right now. Chelsea just look a level above, having beaten City at the weekend. United came back to win 3-1 against Aston Villa. I think they've lost Harry Maguire, but I don't think that really matters. To stand a chance of even being in the top four, as a Liverpool fan, we've got to go and win all four of these games. Minimum, nine points. Somehow, lose a game, which people would probably turn around and say, oh, United, could be any of them. You could beat United and maybe lose against, like, a Crystal Palace, a West Brom, a Burnley, something like that, because they're going to be three frustrating teams to come up against. Palace, Burnley, and West Brom. Very, very frustrating teams to come out and play against for your last three games of the season. Unreal. It's going to be difficult. Can we get 12 points out of 12? Of course we can. Will we? I'm not entirely sure. I don't think we will. I think as a maximum, I think Liverpool will get nine. Which would be three wins. We are capable of doing it. We can turn a performance on. And we do look a little bit better than we have done in recent times. I think our only defeat in our last nine or eight or nine games or something is against Real Madrid in the Champions League. Other than that, I think, you know, we're not doing too badly at the moment. But it is an absolute reach to think that we can get in the top four easily. Leicester look like they're struggling at the moment. Don't know what it is. They just look like they're having that little bit of end of season struggle. They're still five points clear of West Ham. They've still got a little bit of breathing space, but not much. And then there's us behind West Ham. One point behind West Ham we are. It's difficult. It's really, really difficult to think of where we where we will finish. Me personally, if I'm being completely honest with you, my heart says that we'll make it. My brain says ask again later. And it's only because I cannot commit to us finishing in the top four. I really hope that we do. And I hope with every fibre of my being that we finish in the top four. But it's such a big ask. There's six points between us and Leicester already. Seven points between us and Chelsea. But they are, no one, we're not catching Chelsea. So we're looking at Leicester. We're looking at West Ham. It's, it's, a, it's, mass, it's a massive ask to expect that Le both Leicester, West Ham, Tottenham and Everton are all going to drop points and we're going to go on and march on and get into the top four. Massive, massive ask. And I don't know if we will do it. That's just my opinion. That's just my thoughts. There's a lot of people turning around saying that, well, we could get like, you know, we could lo like win two games, which would be six points and get two draws. That's eight points. Maybe. Would that be enough? Because you would literally need Leicester to either draw one game and lose all the rest. And they've only got three games themselves. West Ham have only got three games. We've got four games. I don't know. It, it's not in our hands. We rely on other t other teams. And if we can, I want to just look at West Ham and Leicester's uh, fixtures for the remaining games. So, that Chelsea... Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, that's the FA Cup. That's the FA Cup final. So, they have... Leicester play Man, Man United tomorrow night. Then they'll play Chelsea at the weekend. And then Tottenham after that. That's difficult that's that is difficult wow okay that's a difficult run in but i'm not getting excited about that west ham have brighton west brom and southampton not the easiest not the most difficult depends on what brighton turns up depends on what west brom turns up it depends on what southampton turns up literally 
that's it for uh, for West Ham. So listen, I'm going to wrap this video up because it's longer than I thought it was going to be anyway. But there's a lot of things to think about there. Great victory for us at the weekend against Southampton. And it was well needed. Really, really well needed victory for us. Definitely something that we can we can build on. Depends on the fitness of our players and such like that as well. Um, let me know what you think. Can Liverpool... Yes, we can make it. Will Liverpool make it into the top four by the end of the season? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. And thanks for all of your support. Um, I really do appreciate every single one of you. Um, and I will hopefully make it more regular towards the end of this season as well. Just as I say, been dealing with a little bit of illness and such like that, but should be back and firing now for the rest of the season. Preview for Manchester United game will be coming on Wednesday, I believe. If not, if I can get it out on Tuesday, probably Wednesday. I want to see what the result of United Leicester is on Tuesday night. So we'll see how that goes as well. But for now, do take care of yourselves. Thank you ever so much once again, and I'll catch you later.